Well, often when we have a guest on from BreastLink, it is uh, usually one of their doctors or staff. Well, today, what's really nice here, we have one of their patients and also a very best friend of the patient as well. I'd like to introduce Capri Griffin. Nice to meet you. Good morning. And uh, Sue Ann Tinio, yes. did I pronounce that right? Yes. Good to meet both of you. Thank and you. Um, first, I want to say that C Capri is uh, the person that went through uh, procedures at uh, BreastLink, and uh, your good friend was there. Tell me about your experience uh, with your diagnosis and at BreastLink. How long ago did this uh, happen? Uh, well, it's been, I guess, almost two years since diagnosis now. Okay. I um, went to an outside, not associated with BreastLink mm -hmm. Imaging Center, and had a biopsy. Got a phone call back and thought it would just be routine, nothing, mm -hmm. and was diagnosed kind of over the telephone briefly, quickly, and um, immediately made some appointments for consultations, one of which was with BreastLink. Okay, and at the time, uh, did you use the one here? I know they have a facility in Orange, I think it's um, They were in the middle of their merger when I met up with okay. them. So, yeah. um, I, but I did finish my treatment here in Laguna Hills. Okay, because I know that was right about the time mm -hmm. that they uh, started to come over here. Had to be um, quite scary at the time. Yeah, I mean, I think um, being diagnosed with breast cancer is shocking for anyone. Definitely shocking for me. I was young, mm -hmm. no family history, so I, it really stopped me in my tracks. Yeah, I bet. You are fortunate. You have a very good friend here with Sue Ann. And are you? Uh, do you have family members as far as close by here? Are you married or? I do. I'm really blessed. I have a husband. Okay. I have a, an extended family, and I have a great circle of friends. So. And that's that's important during this time, isn't it? It's huge. Sue Ann, uh, your best friend gets diagnosed with cancer. At times, I have heard that uh, the shock is almost more so for the friends and family than it is for the person, because the person was just like setting it back for a moment and digesting it where the family members and uh, friends are the first ones sometimes that really uh, show a, a lot of uh, concern, outward concern. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, we were shocked. I was uh, with Capri right after she felt the lump before mm -hmm. the biopsy. And um, I was shocked to find out that it was not only stage four, but triple negative. Wow. And, um, what we did immediately, like she said, I'm, I'm one of uh, many caregivers that Capri has. Mm -hmm. And immediately when we found out, I remember I was at work and I conferenced in um, two of our other friends. So there were four of us on the phone. And we all spoke about it and, and made a plan and um, got together on a family meeting mm -hmm. um, with extended family, Capri's family. And we allowed Capri to set up what she needed and wanted. Um, sometimes when people are diagnosed, not sometimes, all the time, there's a lot of um, choices that are taken away from the patient because their life changes completely. Right. So I think it's really important um, to listen to the patient and let her tell us what she needs and wants. Was that difficult for you? Uh, did you, were you outward with it or did you kind really of just open. become very centered? No, I was really okay. open with it because I think um, I knew I was going to need a lot of support, and it's mm -hmm. not something I'm good at asking for. So by putting it out there that, hey, this is happening, it allowed people who were willing to come to me and say, we want to help. What can we do? Because asking for help is not my strong suit like a lot of people. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think uh, over the years, we've heard people who go through things like this and in other medical events, and a lot of times their position is, I'm okay. I don't want to be a burden to anyone. You know, I'll ask if yeah. I need it. I definitely think that doing what's counterintuitive to you is the most important thing during something like this. It allowed for richer relationships in my life with people that were already there. Mm -hmm. And if I had closed off, I think it would have been a much worse experience for me and for them. So from the time that you were diagnosed to all the different uh, procedures you went through, about how long was that? Um, I started treatment October and was finished with um, radiation in time for Thanksgiving, so a total of a year. Okay. But my treatment plan was pretty extensive. I have what they uh, lovingly refer to as the works. Mm -hmm. So if, if there is a treatment, I got that treatment. Okay. <laughs> so you got everything that I had you neoadjuvant needed. chemotherapy, which is prior to surgery to rest and shrink the tumor. Mm -hmm. And then I had um, partial mastectomy with reconstruction all in one surgery, which is new and amazing. Right. Um, and then I had radiation treatment for six weeks. Wow. Mm -hmm. What was your uh, 
energy level during that time? I imagine it was pretty low, and how did you and your other, other uh, support group come into play? Well, uh, like Sue Ann said, we had a, a meeting and kind of put together what, do I, what will I need help with, what will I be able to do based on what the doctors at Breastlink really helped me understand what's going to be happening to me. And um, I, we built an online website, really, where people could pick a chore, take it, and do oh, it. Okay. And that was really helpful instead of all the phone calls of, what can I do? Oh, nothing. It was sort of like, I need meals mm -hmm. for this week with my family, and people handled it. Yeah, I've seen those websites it, for other it's things. It's amazing. Care.com, I think it was. Yeah, no, not care. yeah I've, I've, <laughs> I've used it not for us, my family personally, but others we knew, and to help them out. Uh, I know you're married. you have kids? I do. Okay. How was that? Well, how, that, how did you communicate with them? What are their ages? I have a 20, well now, at the time of diagnosis, I had a 25-year-old and a 5-year-old. You have a 25-year-old? I, <laughs> I do. All right, the 5-year-old I could see, the 25-year-old I never would have That's guessed. for another show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't look that old to have a 25-year-old. Thank you. Yeah, one of my, uh, actually one of the really defining factors of why I chose BreastLink was Dr. Curcio's humanity in dealing mm -hmm. with me at initial diagnosis. And one of the questions I asked all of the doctors I went to see was how do I tell my five-year-old? That was really heavy right. on my mind. And most of them brushed it off and hand me a pamphlet on cancer. You know, she mm -hmm. didn't. She took the time to really say, that's a tough question. Hand me a book for children. Help me navigate those waters. And I was just brutally honest. I mean, I didn't say what the end result could be, but I said, mommy's not going to feel well. Mommy's going to lose her hair. Mommy's going to have mm -hmm. surgery. All those, I was just honest. And it helped her, I think, really adjust to the changes as they happen. Yeah. Did you ever have a time that you interacted with her kids as well to kind of tell them what's going on? Kennedy is, um, sorry, let me get emotional. Kennedy is with my daughter. Kennedy daughter. a five-year-old. Five and I was uh, with Kennedy since she found out she was pregnant. So uh, we are so blessed um, to have this extended family. I'm auntie and mm -hmm. she knows she can come to me. and. Uh, my daughters know her daughter, who my daughters are 27 and 25, so it's this big extended family mm -hmm. that um, wherever we were needed, we stepped in. Yeah, how long have you been friends? Uh, I don't know, maybe almost 15 years. Okay, so yeah. quite a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see where that support, especially there were times when you could maybe talk to the kids in, in a different, approach it a little bit differently, mm -hmm. uh, that would have been a really big help and just all the other uh, care and support that, that you gave. One of the uh, things that uh, you this is a, something that you did that was fun, that BreastLink does. Uh, I forget when they did this, about two or three months ago, the Breast Cancer Thrivers Cruise. And yeah. you both won on that. Did you go on this year's or uh, previous year's? This year, this okay. most recent one. And it really was a great experience. I didn't know what to expect. I had never been involved with anything like that before. And um, it was a really rich experience. I mean, I gave me some mm -hmm. downtime after all of the, the big part was over mm -hmm. and a lot, of, um, a lot of chance to relate with people who had been through what I'd been through and yeah. get new appreciation for the support I did have because a lot of people don't have that kind of support. Yeah, I think that's uh, great that you're able to have that. But I know that uh, one of the things that BreastLink is very good at, maybe people don't have as much support as you did they have that support there as well. Absolutely. Uh, they obviously do all the, everything else that is needed, the medical part. But I know, in fact, I think we've had them on the show here before. They have people that are just there for that purpose, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, from the time I walked through their doors, I felt like I was being enveloped. Mm -hmm. You know, and every step of the way, there was a person to help me with, whether it was results or the next procedure, or to walk me through or deal with even the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. of going through this. They treated the whole human for me, not just my body. Yeah. And how are you today? I'm great. I'm healthy. I'm well. I'm living. I, I'm really great. And w what about you? You see your friend here doing, doing quite well and knowing that you played a good, a good part in giving her the, uh, the support she needed. Again, I was one of many, but um, the inspiration is beyond measure. Mm -hmm. Beyond measure. It made everything that I was going through in my life, um, very small mm -hmm. compared to what she did. And it, it gave me actually a new outlook on life. Um, the, the cruise, um, meeting the medical professionals from BreastLink, um, understanding what they did. And when, when I met, um, I'll, I'll never forget meeting with Dr. Curcio with Capri at one point. She um, accepted me 
as part of the package. So when I had questions, she readily answered them and took the time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that made me feel more comfortable. Um, but the, the cruise and Breastlink, and I, I just can't say enough about it. It's really an amazing group. And that's nice that Breastlink, the, the people over there, took the time to speak to you exactly. as well, to let exactly. you know what's going on. And mm -hmm. at times probably gave you a heads up of uh, this is how Capri is probably going to feel during this time and what she uh, may or may not need. And, and yeah. allowing me in those sessions to take notes because when you're experiencing something like this, you're getting a lot of information. And so when we, would wa when we walked out of the appointment, we were able to uh, say to each other, okay, this is what I heard, what did you hear? Absolutely. And then have the notes there. And they were so welcoming in that respect. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you. And I'm glad you have such a good support group and a, a great friend and obviously other friends and family as well. And a great doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Breastlink, uh, their location here, Laguna Hills, not far away, over by uh, the mall over there, uh, 949 7700797. And uh, as you can see, they really take care of you. Um, yes, they're going to do their best to take care of the medical needs, but the, the whole person is uh, what's sometimes even more important, right? Absolutely. All right. Good to meet yeah. you Thank and you. you as well. Thank you, Ken. We'll be right back.